Welcome to the JHM High Pressure Fuel Pump Upgrade Installation video. Here are the tools and components you need to complete the process of installing our kit. First you're going to have your pump already out of the car, clamped in a vise. You want to use something soft. We have aluminum soft jaws, but to help out from ruining the, the housing of the pump, we went ahead and just put some cardboard around it. You get the JHM pump kit. You get the JHM install tool. This is very handy for keeping everything clean and neat and getting any debris away and, and not allowing the piston to get dirty. Uh, brake cleaner. You don't want to use carburetor cleaner or something too uh, petroleum based because it will damage the o-ring on the pump and can damage other seals and make them swell. And then we just took the cap from the brake parts cleaner and we just filled it with motor oil. Just whatever motor oil you use on your normal oil changes will work. And that's going to be to lubricate everything when you assemble it. We just have a regular 3 8 wrench, a deep 18 millimeter socket. Make sure you clean that out thoroughly inside. Get inside there with some of the brake parts cleaner and get in there with a rag and clean it out. Make sure though if you use a rag it's lint free. You want to use lint free rags in this situation because we could bind the pump up. And then lastly a torque wrench you will need because you're going to end up torquing it to 40 foot pounds when you're done. With the fuel pump out of the car, I know we already showed that we had it in a vise, but before you put it in the vise, ideally you're going to want to clean the part just to get oil, dirt, debris from the outside because you don't want anything contaminated. So this is where we use the brake parts cleaner. And right inside of here is where you're going to see motor oil. And this is what we like about brake parts cleaner because it's good for seals on brake components. It's generally going to be safe for plastic, the O-rings. Like I said, if you use carburetor cleaner on this O-ring here, it'll swell. So just get everything nice and clean. And if you have an air compressor, you're going to want to blow it off with air. If not, shake it. It should evaporate quickly. Because like I said, you're not going to want to use rags with lint on them. You could use lint-free rags um, in a pinch of a paper towel, but you're not going to want to use those rags that have lint on them because they might hurt the piston. So now with it chucked nice and tight in the vise, like I said, use the cardboard to help from galling up the housing. You don't want to damage anything. You're now going to take your 18 millimeter deep socket that's thoroughly cleaned with your 3 8 wrench. The longer it is, the better because it is torqued about 40 foot pounds, so it will take a little bit of strength. Pop it free. You can spin the bulk of it that way, and then you should be able to just do it by hand. And make sure your surface is clean. Our surface, we previously cleaned it. It's scratched up for transmission rebuilds, but it is clean. We sprayed it off. We used fluid. So, yeah, you just pull it out, it comes out like that. Once it's apart, you may find a lot of debris and whatnot inside. This we're also going to clean with the brake cleaner. I'll do that off camera, but you're going to want to blast this out real heavily. There may be some debris, particles, a bunch of carbon just from the years of use from it pumping. That's not a big deal. Just get it all cleaned out. Blow through the fuel pump passages. These may or may not look like yours. These pumps are... The kit installs the same way on many different pumps. Let's get this all cleaned out. I'll do that off camera. But this one specifically... This piston, a lot of times, the actual uh, cylinder for the piston will stay inside the pump. This one's not. So there's some debris in here just from the age. This one's being a little tricky. So I just put it in the vise. And I'm using a quarter inch extension. Mine fits nicely. And I'm just tapping it down. So now it's apart. Normally, like I said, a lot of times you're going to take this apart on most of the pumps. And this is going to just be in there like that. So you would just pop that out. You can pull it out with a pair of pliers, whatever. So now we have it completely disassembled with the original parts. The only thing you're going to reuse from this is this little housing that has a seal in it, which you're going to have to be careful of. This also needs to be cleaned off camera as well. I'm going to do that on this one. You can just see a lot of the, the junk and just debris just from years of use. Not a big deal. Just got to clean that all out. Clean the housing out. And then these factory components, the piston, the cylinder, and the spring are all going to be discarded and you'll be replacing them with JHM components. I have now removed the JHM components from the packaging. We have the cylinder for the piston which will go into the pump housing. Set that aside for now. We have the larger diameter piston and we have the spring and retainer assembly. Before opening the package, I made sure my hands were clean, dust-free, lint-free. Blew everything off with air before I opened them. Didn't want to contaminate the products. Made sure the bench top was clean as well. I also have our 
assembly tool here ready. So the first step, everything apart, I'm going to take the retainer that holds the piston, screws into the pump we took out on the first step. Put this pump end, the smaller end with the retainer clip, and get it in the pump. Probably want to twist it. We don't want to damage this seal. This seal is what keeps the oil and fuel separated. So we can stick that all the way in. And now we need to put the spring on. Doesn't matter, go either way. And this is where the tool comes into play. Is this retainer needs to push on. It can be tight, it needs to clip on. You're not done here. You have to make sure that this tap it gets tapped into the retainer so this stays together. So this is where the tool comes into play. It drops in. You can just use your vise. And you're not going to want to be violent with this, so we just want to kind of hold it, keep everything moving around. And we're just going to use the plastic end of a handle. You're probably going to need a screwdriver for this. I just happen to have a 3-8 wrench that has this, but... So Got to really make sure that that tap it's all the way down. So now it's nice and tight on there. No play, spring everything, you push the piston back. Now we just have to assemble everything. Just for some extra clarification on the spring retainer, this tap it, this little dome poking out of the actual retainer on top, that's the part we're hammering down. So the tool is gonna hold this outer ring right here that goes on the spring. We're going to be tapping this down. So for those who are finicky and like specifications, just for reference, if you measure the height of this after I pounded it down right here, it's going to be with, you know, with your cheapy little caliper. It's about two millimeter, plus or minus. You know, you got to just make sure it's bottomed out. Like I said, you can tell it's tight. If you want to check it for reference, the factory one here is about two millimeter as well. And then as shipped, we pre-assemble this it's gonna be when you get it straight right around three millimeter so that's fine it's just started for you so you guys don't get it crooked so it's gonna be about three millimeter or so when it's out when it's fully seated it should be right around two millimeter plus or minus depending how you measure it but the big key is just see how you have it see that it's wide open when you receive it and that that right here it's going to actually drop inside to help lock it into place. So if you pay attention to that and everything's nice and tight, you don't have to worry about damage to the retainer due to it not being tight. Now that the piston's all assembled, you want to make sure it goes in and out. You should be able to just push on the spring, make sure you got that oil in there. Now we got to put the cylinder sleeve into the pump housing. You can see there's a smaller diameter end here and a larger one. The smaller diameter end will go into the pump. It just drops all the way to the bottom. And just to make sure the piston fits nice and clean on the cylinder, it's good to just, you know, maybe get a finger full. Cover the head of the piston. Put some oil on the O-ring. And now you're going to go together. Just slide it right down the cylinder. And you can actually turn it by the spring, it'll go pretty far down. Grab your deep 18 millimeter socket. Tighten it all the way down. Now you just gotta torque it to 40 foot pounds. Now it's torqued. One last quick check. Like I said, you don't want to have lint on the rags. You don't want dirt. You want it to be nice and clean. So realistically, the only thing you would have done wrong by being dirty with the installation, so to speak, would be this piston would not push down. You can see I can push this down with my thumb. So that little bit of oil we put in there, everything's good. As long as that moves easily, it's not chunky, hard to push, you're good to go. This thing's ready to be installed back in the car.